Can, uh, and can we actually go to this gentleman down here in the middle? I don't think I've got anything nearly as outrageous to say. <laughs> I'd really just like to follow on from what David was saying. My name is Chris Tenney. I'm a paleoclimatologist at the University of Wollongong. And, and one of the things that we can do is we can learn from the past of what might happen in the future. Now, if we took a time capsule and went back to Greenland 130,000 years ago, the summers there were a lot warmer just because of the way the Earth was rotating, orbiting around the sun and the greenhouse gases. It's five degrees centigrade warmer, and a large part of Greenland and the Antarctic ice melted. Now, that led to a sea level rise of four to six meters. Now, that's a global issue. It's not just temperature. There's a lot of people, millions of people, living in low-lying regions, particularly in the developing world. There's some hell of an expensive real estate up and down this coastline, and it's something else that maybe we need to actually think about. We'll take that as a statement as well. Thank you very much. And we'll move down to the second from the front here, the gentleman with the glasses. Uh, hi. Yeah, I'd just like to follow up on that point. Um, as a concerned citizen, the, the argument about whether it's anthropogenic or non-anthropogenic really doesn't affect me. What I'm interested in is the risk management plan that governments are going to have <coughs> to fix up the problem of higher sea levels and, you know, um, refugees and people moving between countries and wars and those sort of things. So I'm really concerned about that. I think when, you know, Rome's burning and we're, we're seeing some people fiddling around here. <laughs> There's a lady just behind you with a hand up. Thank you. Um, is it Greg Byrne on the, on the end, CEO of World Wildlife Fund? Um, I just find it interesting, you know, this, this issue of, um, you know, people being the problem. And I'm just wondering, two quick questions. Um, you only you, have time for one well, very quick one because we're nearly out of time. Is the world overpopulated, Greg? The world is going from 6.5 billion to 9 billion. It'll probably return be it below that. The key thing we have to manage is our burning of fossil fuels, and we have to slow things down. And we can do it very, very well by stimulating a sustainable economy with a lot of the clean tech and help a lot of people out of poverty. And that is wonderful. So more people is a good thing? More people is a good thing? Yes, your point. Not mine. Mm -hmm. uh, OK, so. I'm, so, I'm sorry to wind you up, and I'm sorry that uh, all of you didn't get a chance. Uh, there will be other opportunities uh, on the internet. So a big thank you uh, to our panel. Um, if you'd give them a round of applause, I think they'd appreciate it. OK. And to our studio audience, thank you very much. Well, I'm absolutely sure that we could keep this going into the wee small hours and beyond. However, this is where we'll have to end the television component. But if you'd like to continue the discussion online, you can actually go to a special website, abc.net.au slash swindle, and follow the links to the forum. Also online to answer your questions and respond to your comments will be two of tonight's global warming warriors. David Caroli and Bob Carter, and they'll be logged in very soon. I hope you've enjoyed tonight's program. I'll be back in the late line chair, rather thankfully, on Monday. Until then, good night and stay warm. <laughs> <laughs>